Hello everyone, welcome to my channel and welcome to Iceland. First of all, this itinerary is based on the fact that we have rent a camping truck and slept overnight at campsite along Ring Road. Moving around on a camping vehicle help us to be more proactive in terms of time. Plus, it was 4x4 truck so we can get to the plateau via F-Road. Remember, it is illegal and dangerous to drive on F-Road with a vehicle other than 4x4. Since it's summer time with almost 24 hours of daylight, we have plenty of time to cram in more activities in a day, anytime, anywhere we want, even go to the beach at midnight. Now let's get started. First stop was Sergeland's Foss, 2 hours drive from the airport. Because it's close distance and easy access, it becomes a big tourist attraction and extremely crowded. We suggest arriving early in the morning for better experience. And remember to dress properly, I mean waterproof clothes. You could definitely get wet walking to the back of the waterfall. If those spray from Sierra Island spot isn't enough to make you feel awake yet, walk another 15 minutes, enter a cave, you would find Liu Fubui, a small waterfall that you have to wade through a narrow stream to get to. We completely got soaked. Such a good way to start the day. Thirty minutes drive, we hit another waterfall. This is one of the most iconic waterfall of Iceland, featured in some movies and TV shows such as Thor, The Dark World, Game of Thrones, and Viking. Sixty meters high and twenty-five meter wide, Skoga forces on a cliff that used to be the former coastline, but it has receded five kilometer. There are two approaches: reaching the top with stairs and walking to the base. We did both and recommend everyone to do the same. Of course, be prepared to get wet again. Skoga fast quite powerful and produce so much spray. Summertime, lupine season, you see them everywhere on the island. Besides being very beautiful, lupine is also a useful plant. They have long roots to help prevent erosion and help fixing nitrogen into the soil. Right across Skogafosk was a large and beautiful lupine field. Don't forget to stop and snap some photos. Continue on Route 1, we have arrived at a very cool place, wasn't dramatic landscape or anything, just the remaining of a crash landing US Navy aircraft, abandoned here since 1973. The site has become a popular place for photography. There were no casualties in that incident, so you don't have to worry about being disrespectful.
After that, we drove to a small town nearby called Vic, had dinner, and got dressed at the campsite. That's it for day one. Next morning, we headed to Dihaolai, a cliff that looked over the endless black beach along Black Sand Beach. It was super windy up here, so remember to dress warm and be careful getting close to the edge. Not far from there was Black Sand Beach Renisfiera, one of the most interesting beach in the world. Very easy to access, therefore very crowded too. Arrive early in the morning if you want to take nice photos, otherwise you would find yourself busy fencing people from the scene. And don't forget to climb those bizarre columns, they look so cool. Along Route 1, we drove by a very impressive huge mossy lava field. There are trails that you can use to walk into it. We came to one of my favorite places in Iceland, Fjera Glirish is the most beautiful canyon I've ever seen. Appearing in Justin Bieber's 2015 music video I'll show you, resulting in people flocking the site following years. With 300,000 counted in 2019, the canyon simply cannot withstand this much traffic and closed to public from March to June the following year in order to give nature enough time to heal. Weather got better on day 3. We have departed from campsite really early in the morning. Try to avoid the crowd. As expected, there's no one yet and we had a place for ourselves. Svinafels Yoko's glacier was very easy to access and you can get really close to the body of the glacier but don't step on it. It's illegal and dangerous to walk on the ice unless you go with an expert on a glacier hiking tour. Next stop was Mula Glurish, a magical canyon, but got much less attention compared to Fiera Glurish that we visited yesterday. It was super windy and we couldn't even walk normally. It's possible to get down to the riverbed and walk all the way to the end where you would find a second waterfall. We did not do that and just got to the first one. If you decide to go all the way, be careful crossing the river.
The wind kept blowing like crazy as we continued on Ring Road to the point that we even debated if we should get out of the truck at all. However, we still decided to make a brief visit at a big beautiful blue glacier lake named Yoku Salon. You can go on a boat tour to get real close to the glacier if you want to. We of course skipped that, didn't want to be extra exposed out there. But if you travel with kids, they could be excited because there's a lot of seals swimming in here. Then we crossed over the road and found Diamond Beach. These pieces of ice were supposed to look like diamond, but we didn't have good lighting, so they did not look as magical as they should be. Plus, we were suffered from getting hit on the face by flying sand. This was when we tapped out, went back to the truck. Next, we took a break had lunch at a restaurant called Hakush in a town nearby. They have really good langoustin, so fresh and tasty, highly recommend. Then we went to Harfish Hot Tubs for a nice dip. <laughs> our first sunset in Iceland happened to be at our favorite place. Couldn't say enough how lucky we felt. Long black sand beach with vast Rohan mountain as background. Stock's nest just look like out of this world. You cannot miss this place if you love photography. However, it sits on a private land, so there's a $9 per person entrance fee. You pay at a coffee shop out front. We did not sleep that night and drove straight to our next destination. I have never enjoyed a night drive this much in my life. The road, the sky, the mountain, everything just sit there, being beautiful. Couldn't help but stop multiple times just to get out and stare at them. And even had meal on the side of the road. Next morning, we have arrived at Henry Foss. There's a short hike to get to it, about one mile, but you could hit Lit Lena Foss halfway first, another beautiful waterfall. Before seeing Henry Foss, the trail ends at the lookout. You can enjoy the view from here or go further in to get closer. I have managed to cross the river and go all the way to the base of the Henry Foss. Do not recommend though, almost fell into the river doing so. Went a little further, we hit Strutfoss because this more remote has no asphalt road connect to and wasn't accessible at close distance, so Strutfoss did not receive much attention. 
although it looks like a sibling to Hengi Fox with Red Strader running across the underlying cliff, the hike of 5 miles down and back, pretty flat with lots of blue pine growing along. Trail ended about 1 mile away from the waterfall, not possible to get any closer. We then rushed to next stop since the day went by so fast and it felt like 24 hours a day isn't enough when you're in Iceland. Stulaj is a canyon created by Glacier River. You can actually see it from an observation platform that's accessible by car. But if you don't mind doing a short hike, approaches from the other side allow you to walk right down to the river. These basalt columns used to be mostly underwater, but then river flow was diverted to serve the power plant nearby. Water level dropped 26 feet, brought to like a masterpiece of modern nature. First thing of day 5 was the waterfall. Yup, another waterfall. There's so many waterfalls in Iceland. Detti Foss, referred to as the beast in comparison to the beauty of Guda Foss, is claimed as Europe's most powerful waterfall with average water flow of 400 cubic meters per second in summertime. The mist from the falls is visible from miles away. You can visit either east or west side, but choose at the beginning because they may look close but could take an hour driving from one side to the other. Here is is the geothermal area located right next to Route 1 with four murals, steam vents, boiling mud pools and orangey landscape, the site looked just like the surface of another planet. I didn't stay long due to bad smell of sulfur and don't recommend to do so. It could not kill you, but not a good thing to inhale as well. Driving by Lake Mivoat, you could see lots of old craters, with the trail allow you to walk among them. We skipped this spot due to strong wind and cold, but would love to do it on a nicer day. Then we came to meet the beauty, good or fast which means waterfall of God. Legend said that the name came from an important event when the Viking leader is said to have had thrown his pagan statues into the waterfall after deciding to choose Christian as the state religion. Not sure how real the story is, but for sure Guda Foss deserved nickname the beauty. No shower, no problem. It's not hard to find a natural hot spring in Iceland. 
Just right outside of Amureyri, second largest city of Iceland, we found one just right next to the edge of a cliff. Had a really good time here. That night was the second time we saw sunset in Iceland. We loved every moment on the road. It was quiet and peaceful. No hurry, no rushing. Just us and the nature. Next morning, we've got to Kishufesh, a mountain with unique shape, featured in Season 6 series Game of Thrones as Arrowhead Mountain, also a photography hotspot, but we came at a not really good time with strong sunlight and so many people around, couldn't do much, but this place is nice and worth a visit. The rest of the day was a lot of driving. We were heading to the plateau via F Road. Remember, only 4x4 vehicles are allowed to travel on F road. The landscape was so stunning. Craters, waterfalls, canyons, lake, mountains. You could find anything here. Despite weather got bad, become cloudy, windy, rainy, and even snowy at some point, I still spend whole day being outside. This area called Landmana Lugas, known for its hundreds colorful mountains. There are long trails that you could go on a multiple days backpacking trip. I really wish I have time to do so. Well, maybe next visit.
The name Lan Mana Lugas means people's pool. Reason why? Simple. There are hot springs and hot pools all over the place. They're free and enjoyable all year round. I found one right next to Lan Mana Lugas Tourist Information Center. Nothing feels better than relaxing in a hot pool after a long hike. Next day, we drove back to Reykjavik, capital and the largest city of Iceland. Reykjavik means base of smoke. The name is said to be inspired by the steam raising from the hot spring in the region. This place is believed to be the location of the first permanent settlement in Iceland and used to be farmland until officially found in 1786 as an exclusive trading center. In 1944, Republic of Iceland was found and Reykjavik became country's capital. A quick fun fact, it may look like a modern city nowadays, but just 40 years ago, people still live in traditional tough houses. There's no skyscraper in Reykjavik. The 244 feet tallest building in the city is a church, Hakrim Skutja. You can go all the way up to Bell Tower to have a nice view of the city. Although being home to 36% of country's population, Reykjavik is pretty small in size and very walkable. We have spent whole day wandering around and eating Icelandic food. They're very delicious. Last stop was one of the most visited attractions in Iceland. Blue Lagoon located in a larvae field and is supplied by water used in a nearby geothermal power station. Water renews every two days, has the average pH of 7.5 and salt content of 2.5%. It is said to have good benefit for skin conditions. Basic entrance fee is $100, quite expensive, but well, it's in our bucket list so we have no other choice. But anyway, it felt nice having a hot bath on a cloudy cold day. And that is all everyone. We had a really good time in Iceland and wish you the same. Goodbye and thank you for watching.